Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Picking out a graphics card for your system can be quite challenging. If you're a gamer, you obviously want the best performance you can get without underspending and ending up with something where you got like a CPU that's like super, super fast and a graphics card that's holding it back. But you also don't want to overspend and discover a bottleneck somewhere else in your system so you're not even getting the most out of your new purchase. So today we'll be taking a look at a few cards in the Radeon lineup courtesy of Sapphire to help you determine which is... Yeah, I played the drums. Right for you. Combining efficiency and gaming performance, R7 series graphics from Sapphire have the power to do it all. So today we've got the Sapphire VaporX lineup of cards with their Vapor Chamber technology, which is essentially a heat pipe design sort of flattened out and spread out. Anyway, you can watch a fast as possible episode about it if you really want to understand it better. So on to the cards. All of them feature quiet fans, two DVI, one HDMI, and one display port output with support for up to four monitors at once without the need for any MST hubs. And they all have full compatibility with AMD's Gaming Evolved software. So you can use all the great features such as automatic game optimization and their game DVR for hardware accelerated gameplay recording and streaming, including recording on the fly. The first card is the Sapphire VaporX R7 250X 1 gig, coming in at around 100 bucks. It requires a minimum 450 watt power supply and is the lowest end gaming card that we'd really recommend. When you go below that, $100, $120 ish mark, you end up with something that's not delivering great bang for the buck. So, this card is perfect for any casual users who want to game occasionally or play games with lower requirements. So, you know, indie games, uh, Hearthstone, League of Legends, these would be a great match for this card if you still want to turn the details up past minimum. So, jumping up two notches, we have the Vaporex R9 270X 2 gig. But, Linus, you might ask, why skip the 260X? Well, the answer is that we didn't really see it as that big of an upgrade. So the 260X will still struggle with the same games that the 250X might struggle with. You're still gonna have to turn down the details. And while the 270X is a bit more pricey at $200 and requires a 500 watt power supply, it is still a great bang for the buck enthusiast grade graphics card. So you'll be able to play pretty much any game you want. Battlefield 4, Crisis 3, Watch Dogs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You just might not be cranking them all the way to high, you might want to keep settings uh, you know, medium for some of these games to keep your minimum FPS above 30. I know, it's like your PC gamer problems, right? Well, I'm trying to keep my minimum FPS above 30 as opposed to trying to target 30 FPS. Oh, well, there might be some dips sometimes. Whatever. Next is the GPU many of you viewers are probably already familiar with. This is the VaporX R9 280X 3 gig. At $300, this is the enthusiast sweet spot with still pretty good bang for the buck, but you're not quite getting as many FPS per dollar because we're starting to get into the very high end, you know, fancy pants hardware. With a TDP of 250 watts, Sapphire does recommend a pretty beefy power supply on this one. And of course, it comes with a pretty beefy heatsink to dissipate all of that heat. It'll play any game you want though, and on a single 1080p monitor, you'll be able to max out pretty much anything. This is also the point where you can start playing around with advanced features such as uh, running a monitor that runs at a higher refresh rate like 120 or 144 hertz, running a monitor that runs at a higher than full HD resolution like 1440p or even a 21 by 9 ultra widescreen monitor, but this card won't necessarily be able to max out games in those configurations. With some tweaking though, or AMD's Raptor Auto game optimization, you can produce smooth enough gameplay to get a taste of whether or not those features are for you before moving up into the, whatever we would call this tier of graphics card, the like wreck your face graphics card. This is the R9 290. And this with four gigs of onboard GDDR5 memory, a 275 watt TDP, means you are gonna be looking at beefy specs as well as beefy, make sure that you have air conditioning in your room or you have good ventilation and all that stuff. This card performs within 10% of AMD's current flagship, the 290X, for 450 bucks, and you can basically do whatever you want. Maxed out graphics at 2560 by 1440, triple 1080p, or a single 144 hertz display, not a challenge at all. All oh, pretty nice. I mean, unless, of course, you want to add to them and see even more butter smoothness. Anyway, as you can see, 
you know, moving on to 3D Mark scores, because apparently that's what we do now. Uh, graphical performance per do dollar steadily increases as long as you run synthetic benchmarks, which I personally don't think are that meaningful, so let's move on to the benchmarks. NCIX Anthony learned his lesson from his last APU script and actually did some work. Look at that, he even scripted in the part about me criticizing him for not doing any real work. All of these are for average frame rates at 1920 by 1080 using the highest available presets. The numbers for the 250X might look kind of low, but keep in mind, that these games on Ultra at 1080p are pushing a lot of, they're going to be pushing the hardware pretty hard. So with some tuning down to lower medium, you'll still have a very playable experience there. The issue is that in order to keep the comparisons apples to apples, Anthony wanted to run all of the same settings across these cards. Now, of course, there, we didn't, don't test every single monitor configuration and all that, but if you're after those numbers, review sites such as Hardware Canucks have very in-depth reviews of these cards for your you know, min, max, average, frame capturing pleasure. So basically the point is this, AMD has a card for you no matter what your budget is. If you're curious about Crossfire, we still recommend buying the single most powerful card you can afford up until there are no single card options available and then you might want to add a second one. If you still have any questions about what card to get or you're worried about bottlenecks, feel free to email pc at ncix.com for some free non-commissioned advice. I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Comment below on which tier your video card falls into, the types of games you play, and whether you think it's time for an upgrade. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.